Hey, good morning. Good morning. So I have been slam busy with actual like work stuff for the last two days. Ben and Kevin have been scrambling on this thing. Uh, it's coming back right now from the exhaust shop where it got the exhaust put on. Got some stickers on there. Check this out. Oh, and, and Lucy, Lucy's still here. So as you can see, there's only one transfer case in the truck now. This is an MP205, and uh, there was a 241, I believe, bolted to the back of the transmission. There's no need for two cases in this truck, and these internationals originally had just one transfer case mounted right here. It's a divorce transfer case, meaning it's not connected directly to the transmission. This transmission had to be converted to a two-wheel drive transmission so that it has an output yoke on the back instead of the flange to bolt this. Then Ben was able to get a hold of this transfer case as an input yoke on the front so that a drive shaft goes between the two, which is actually correct for this era of international truck. The issue is it's not as simple as just unbolting this back half and pulling it off. You have to completely rebuild the transmission to convert it. Good morning. I was just explaining the Mad Dash overnight transmission rebuild. Yeah, and the one day in and out exhaust that usually takes three days. Yes. That is a work of art. Yeah, we were looking at that. So, Gavin at Elite Fleet Automotive stayed at work all night long and took what the same transmission and rebuilt it from a four wheel so drive to stayed, a two wheel drive. He, he stayed late. It was it's the same transmission, but we changed the tail housing from four wheel drive to two wheel drive so that it doesn't have to have a mated transfer case. So now it has divorced, so we can actually put the intermediate shaft in the way that the truck was originally. So that transfer case is now in the factory location. Uh, it's actually back just a little bit from the factory location. Um, What's a whole lot more factory location than it was? Yeah, no, it's it's probably, I think it's probably two and a half or three inches off of factory. So it's darn near the same. But the reason we had to do that is we had to give ourselves enough distance between the, the transmission and the transfer case to have an actual slip yoke drive line. Ooh, because that just, transmission is not with the Cummins and all that, not what was factory for these. So it's already started out. It's already started out quite a bit further back. So you had to move that back to match so you still have your proper distance in between? Yep. Got it. And that cross member is still the temporary one. Kevin's got the new one fabbed up on the table. He's going to build a custom one that's, yeah, anyway. Sit. Sit. morning workout done so as you can see this transmission needs a cross member to hold up the back of it that Kevin is building right now over there and he's using uh, these hokey fake ass rock sliders that were on here cut apart to now turn into something functional like a transmission mount and you uh, remount the motor up higher uh, I did, and then I actually tipped the motor back. Oh. Because it was too far, it was, the back end was too high up. Oh, and now you're, you're rebuilding the rear mount anyway, so yep. you can get away with that. And that makes plenty of clearance up here. Yeah. So by the end of this, the only thing that's not gonna have been taken off and completely rebuilt and redone is the cab and the bed. Pretty much. Yeah. Axles, transmission, transfer case, motor had to be remounted, wiring, everything else. So Ben, I'm looking through your yard right now, and I'm looking at that truck in there. So far that truck has had transmission in and out of it, transfer case set up, completely redesigned. The motor had to be moved and remounted. And, um, and we had to fix front, everything on the motor. Yeah, front axle already yep. had to be redone. Yep. The rear axle is coming out today and getting redone. All the steering. Yep, so 
Yeah, all, all the electronics, all the wiring, all the wiring steering, the brakes, the steering, all the brakes. being redone. Uh -huh. So, out of all the parts on that truck, the only thing that did not have to be redone and built to for this is the body, the cab, and the bed, which are two things <laughs> you already have sitting here. Yes. Like you have everything in this yard to make that except for the service bed wrong there's one right there i'm looking at it oh yeah i guess there is <laughs> dang it <laughs> called on the carpet again so <clears throat> so that leads the question why did you buy this <laughs> because here, would you like me to read the little yes. portion of the ad of why We need I to justify this? why buying that one to completely build the damn thing in yeah. a week instead of just yeah. building one out of all the parts that so are there that you have out here. The seller posted it online in uh, a International Harvester Facebook group. I saw it in there. Great pictures. Uh, good guy. Well liked. Has a welding fabrication shop. They do a lot of off-road stuff and uh, looked them up and, you know, good, good shop. And so he advertised it and he had a number in mind of what he wanted, but he was trying to get an opinion of from the group of people that knows these trucks, like we all do, what he should sell it for and was open to offers on it at that point. He kind of had a number he wanted, but he was open to offer. And so it had a big, long description, which I'm not going to read because it takes forever. But this is why we read, read the highlights of that description because this, this those are important. Yeah. So the. I'm going to read the, the very end of it, which is the highlight reel, which is why I bought the truck. It says, clean title, probably a lot I'm still missing that we've done in the shop. Mechanically, it's a new truck that you can tow with, chase the Baja 1000, do off-road recoveries, overland in, or use on the farm for the next two generations. Daily driver, whatever you want. What do you all think it's worth? So this was advertised. That was advertised. The daily that, driver. Yeah. Daily driver, tow with it, do off-road recoveries, chase the Baja 1000, go over land and use on your farm. And weren't you also told that you could fly in, hop in it, it, and drive yes. it 2,000 miles home? Uh, 2,440 miles, yes. And so... Thank on, God you didn't. So on the premise <laughs> Thank of, God you took the trailer. On the premise of that, I and when I talked to the seller, he did tell me a few of the things that it was going to need, and I was okay with that. Um, and those items were still undone when I got it. He was forthcoming about that. I'm not bashing the guy. This is not, I'm not, that's not the type of person. I'm we're not trying to do that. But the reality was I thought I was buying a truck that was about 80 to 85% done. And Kevin and I were going to work on it for a week. You and I were going to go out and drive it around, prove, do some miles with it, tow a trailer with it, put the winches on, test everything. So when we drove to Utah, we're like, Okay, maybe we'll get a flat tire, maybe we'll need a fuel filter, but basically it should be ready to go. And when I unloaded it here and pulled in the shop, Kevin took one look at it and said, I don't even want to work on that. And now he's, And now he's, he's rebuilt the entire truck from the front <laughs> to the back. So now, I will honestly say now, the thing about it that was great is the sum of all of the parts that the guy had for the truck were great but they just were mocked up on the truck to make it drive in and out of the shop. It was not a daily driver at all. If you would have picked up all those parts in separate pieces just laying on the trailer and brought them here to assemble, you'd have been in the exact same boat. I would have been in the same boat and I would have been in a lot less money. Mm -hmm. So that's the frustrating part, but you know, you live and you learn, whatever. Um, the neat thing about it now is we can say we built it, yeah. Because we literally Facts. built it. I mean, <laughs> legit every nut, bolt, and washer on it, we've taken off the truck and built it. And um, so we can call it one of our builds le legitimately now. And we know everything on it. So if you and I have any issue with it, it's going to be real easy to figure out what it is because we touched everything. We already know. So I feel more confident about it in that respect. But the bummer is the first time we put any miles on it, it's going to be like the day we leave. Oh my God, I did not realize how perfect it is that you are wearing a roadkill uh, <laughs> sweater. I, I love Freiburger and Finnegan. Those guys are amazing. They're, they are my mantra. <laughs> okay, Kevin's getting the cross member sandblasted. Then this rear axle is gonna come out because you can see these, uh, these spring perches 
were welded to some other axle and they cut off and left part of the other axle hooked to them because they're not the right radius and then like kind of half welded them to this axle and you see they're all not like lined up these are the factory perches uh, on this axle so what Kevin is going to do is cut all of this crap off and get rid of it and then remove correctly these perches move them over here and weld them on correctly to give the right pinion angle uh, so that's a lot of like metal fabrication still has to be done on this housing and then if you remember I said that uh, rock sliders they had made the rocker guards were like straight across on this side and they had like an angle up on the other and we couldn't figure out why uh, Kevin also figured out this hokey body mount that they made they're off by a half inch on each side they welded them on at different heights so to make up for it with the cab not sitting totally level they just angled the rock sliders on that side so that part's not going to get fixed before this trip but once the truck gets back these are going to get cut completely off and actual real body mounts are going to go back in and make this like correct while i was gone the last couple days the phonox got pulled out uh new tie rods a bunch of new steering parts in it you can see uh, and then actual shims got put in to correct the angle because that was all wrong. So that got fixed. Motor got remounted up higher. They're still going to build some different motor mounts for it because these are not like super cool ones, but they're going to work for this trip. And then it'll get like correct ones put in there. You can see the transfer case, since it's been moved back to right about the factory spot, actually has a super nice, legit factory transfer case mount in here to hold this thing in so that is done like correct now and uh, that's kind of how the rest of this is going to go once there's some time it's like correct and nice parts okay well unfortunately i have to leave because uh the insurance company just called they have a tow truck being sent right now to pick up the rolled over f-150 that's sitting in my yard and uh, i need to get back home to meet them there to let them take that and more importantly uh, collect the check before they do so as much as i would like to uh, stay here for more of getting this thing done in time um, also nice to get paid every once in a while so we got to go do that the copart truck is here to pick up this one what they do is they travel they go around to an area and pick up totaled cars or salvage cars from different uh, tow companies that insurance has totaled out they load up as many as they can and then they haul them back over the mountains to the, uh, the salvage yard Well, it's out of here. All right, it is much later in the day. I'm back home again. I couldn't go back out to Ben's because I got called out to do, you know, like real work. But they are still thrashing on that thing. I'm gonna be back out there tomorrow. And I know I'm not doing like a super great job of like filming all the work that's going on with this truck, but that's because more importantly is getting all the work done to this truck. And I'm having to work like, you know, my job in between as well. So. Um, we're working on it and I think in total from the time Ben got that truck home to the time it's got to be ready to go is 12 days and essentially the whole truck has to be completely rebuilt. Both axles come out, engine has to be completely remounted. The transmission transfer case, complete drive transfer that's in it will not work. Like not a single bit of wiring, not one gauge, not one light worked, um, no brakes, uh, steering, it's been a lot so we're gonna keep scrambling on it i don't know if i'm gonna be able to film anything tomorrow or if it's just gonna be like work on the dang truck uh thank god for kevin um he is like just making leaps and bound headway on that thing and without kevin this wouldn't be happening so for now i'm gonna get some computer work done and we'll see you next time we're working on that truck